Hi everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. So in today's video, uh, we are going to carry on the discussion on caches, uh, and this will be more focused on understanding application of caches, uh, use cases, and industries in which caches are more frequently used. Uh, just to recap, what we did in the last uh, video on caches in part one was we had discussed about overall concepts of caches, why are caches needed, how are caches designed, caches eviction policies, caches invalidation method. If you recollect, caches, uh, uh, caches uh, eviction policies included uh, least recent, uh, least frequently used, least uh, or most recently used, BFO, FIFO. Uh, also on the invalidation method, we talked about the concept of consistency across the DB and the cache. And so we looked at a write through cache, cache aside, uh, write back caches, right? So uh, if you want to go into the details of that, you can refer to the part one of this video. Now coming to this video, we are going to discuss on uh, applications of caches primarily from a system perspective. So uh, in uh, uh, when you look at uh, uh, the design of the system itself, you are looking at operating system, networking layers, databases, right? So those are like, you know, all your different components, right? So uh, when you're designing caches, you know, it could be at any part of, uh, you know, those systems. So operating systems, uh, for example, uh, classic would be like your RAM, uh, right? Uh, then in your networking layer, for example, you could have CDNs. A content distribution network it's primarily uh, used to store uh, content that is static and you could have static images for example you could have static text files right and then you have your databases layer right uh, uh, which includes your standard databases relational or non-relational databases right and then uh, those uh, essentially i think for caches to have an application in the entire system the overall uh, uh, purpose is to basically reduce the latency uh, and to reduce loads right, on your uh, uh, databases or network layers or even the operating system. right. So uh, now coming to I think the use cases uh, which will help you understand uh, uh, if I were to like you know talk right from uh, your layer zero which could be your application layer to all the way to your last layer which could be your uh, databases. Right? So, uh, there are a lot of uh, use cases. Uh, we'll start with, I think, the database caching. So database caching is basically uh, nothing but uh, creating copy or copies of your database and a part of the database, not the entire database. It's primarily used to increase the throughput and reduce the latency, uh, right? So performing uh, multiple operations, I think, on the database, uh, uh, you know, uh, simultaneously. Uh, that's uh, you know, going to be uh, better because you're reading the same uh, content again and again. Uh, and then latency would be down because uh, you have created copies of, uh, you know, database uh, or part of database, right? Uh, CDN, as we discussed, uh, going more into this. So CDN are like content distribution network. Essentially what happens is uh, the content that is repeatedly being uh, requested uh, right by our application and a static in nature can be part of the uh, CDN uh, layer where you keep for example videos uh, web pages and images that are not changing I would say very frequently for example if you have a bank banking application an intro video could be uh, introduction video right where they welcome the customer uh, you write that could be a part of CDN web pages, for example, that you don't change content, right? Uh, again, uh, looking at let's say a sign up page, right, where you have a dedicated user page and uh, uh, you know, uh, sign up, let's say documents, FAQs, all of that, right? Uh, that can form part of web pages and images, of course, right? I mean, images that are not changing and are just displayed on the web, correct? Uh, that's uh, you know, for CD and then coming to, I think, API caches, uh, uh, not a lot of, I think, courses cover this on system design uh, and particularly in caches, but API caches are uh, pretty useful when you are looking at. So uh, I hope I think what you understand what you mean, uh, APIs, right? So APIs are nothing but application programming interface. Uh, these could be like functions that you, you know, derive or use. Uh, 
to get a uh, you know standard responses so uh, example would be uh, your uh, rest api or you know your apis uh, that are like uh, if you have system where you have your front end and back end systems uh, like you know interacting with one another front end and back end could be like you know based on a certain uh, set of apis right uh, where you are retrieving let's say user information you are using retrieving user history of you know purchases all of that right so that's uh, i'll do a separate video uh, you know on apis uh, uh, you know because that's a topic that needs uh, deeper discussion but for now i think understand that api caches are when the api responses are not changing very frequently uh, right so example could be on the e-commerce website you have a product catalog right inside any category for example you are looking at shoes right your part of product catalog more or less remains same probably in a day right uh, you might be adding and taking out certain sku's from the catalog but by and large i think 90 percent probably 80 percent of the content uh, uh, of the product catalog remains the same right so in that case api caches would be useful because uh, the only part that is changing would be your 20% uh, of the new or the deletion, right? Or maybe some addition, right? Uh, edits that you might be doing, right? But beyond that, I think the catalog is remaining the same, right? So API caches can improve the performance uh, 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 if, if, you, if you build out, uh, uh, you know, keeping 80% uh, or 90% of the catalog performance. Uh, I think uh, it'll be also useful to understand uh, one of the most uh, important uh, uh, use cases in uh, caches which is related to uh, cloud caches uh, in particular related to hybrid cloud uh, designs so to understand I think hybrid cloud uh, design I think let's just take a step back and understand what does it mean by a hybrid cloud design so you have basically your on-prem database uh, right, so uh, that could be like you know your legacy relational databases uh, storing a lot of information about your customers and uh, uh, like you know their transactional and whatnot, right? And then you allow cloud uh, layers to in part maybe read the data from it uh, and make it accessible, let's say across you know the different maybe let's say uh, you know locations, right? So. Uh, cloud layer could be application, could be partly also, uh, let's say, you know, it could be application, it could be partly DB, it could be, uh, you know, uh, a mix of both, uh, correct? And now imagine what is happening, right? Uh, when a customer or, you know, your user is uh, reading or like doing any transaction, right? There's going to be a lot of back and forth between this on-prem database and the cloud application, right? Um, and essentially what it means is that every time there are transactions that are happening, you are both reading as well as writing, uh, uh, you know, or I would say it's, uh, uh, you know, putting a lot of load on your on-prem databases, right? So what would be useful is to basically introduce a caching layer in between where, again, you could, you know, store uh, recent transaction history, for example, uh, recent customer data, uh, for example, in this cache layer and avoid basically going to this on-prem database, right? Uh, that's the whole purpose of hybrid cloud caches. Uh, I'll mention towards the end of the uh, video, uh, essentially a link uh, that talks in detail about hybrid cloud caches. Uh, it's on the AWS website. Uh, and if you search for hybrid cloud caches in the AWS uh, uh, documentation, you'll find a lot of details. Uh, again, uh, uh, it would be useful to also understand industries in which caches are used in different forms, right? So, for example, e-commerce industry, uh, where would caches be used? And, and I'm not talking about uh, caches, uh, you know, from a system. This is more of use case perspective. Uh, design are uh, designed to uh, basically solve a business problem right so recommendations for example if I look at recommendations recommendations are probably going to increase your uh, customer interaction 
stickiness of the customer customer retention will be higher if you do provide recommendations right shopping history uh, for example on amazon website it does give you the last maybe 10 uh, visited web pages or like you know from an application the product that you have right and personalization right uh, again personalization is useful to link if you link it to the business metrics customer retention time spent on the website is uh, or the app is less uh, and purchases are more frequent right uh, you can deep dive into like you know uh, business kps but why i'm covering industries is because you need to understand the system part of designing caches is one part but why would the businesses care about like you know caches right uh, uh, in general right so uh, if I can't derive any benefit out of it, right? Why would you invest on that intra uh, if I am not able to generate anything significant, right? So, e so for example, like recommendation, shopping history, personalization, uh, crude examples, right? Uh, big basket, for example, if you order things and the things that you have ordered repeatedly start appearing uh, as some sort of a list, right? All of that is sitting in the cache. Uh, it could be uh, you know on the front end system cache or it could be somewhere between your front end and the db cache where they are retrieving your information but there is definitely uh, you know layers of caches that are like you know catering to each of these use cases in gaming for example uh, you definitely cannot afford any latency uh, uh, right uh, so for example content inside the maps some part of it could be static and could be stored in cache player outfits icons colors of the background top players uh, for example the list and again static library that is probably maintaining meta uh, of the like you know game uh, things of like weapons all of that right i mean those are meta right those don't change right so if you have guns you will have types of guns if you have players you'll have type of like you know players right so all of that information is essentially stored in caches uh, allowing for faster retrieval in finance i think uh, all of us probably use uh, most of the like you know uh, uh, mobile apps for our banks uh, uh, right and in financial uh, industry right I think uh, the concept of multi-layer caches is not unheard of like it's very common um, one of the I think advantages of multi-layer caches is that it allows you to segregate I think systems based on the overall functionality right so for example if I am uh, a customer that is, uh, you know, doing, let's say, a lot of transactions through the apps, uh, having multi-layer caches solves for that problem. And if I am a user that uses that app only once in a month to check the uh, balance uh, on my account, right, that use case is also solved right, through multi-layer multi caches. So understand that I think there are, for simplicity, I've just considered three parts of like you know layers but there could be like you know more layers to it db is like one where you have stored i think all the user information for example cdn as we discussed right on the app you could have or on the web app you could have like you know your standard images and uh, fonts and uh, faqs documents all of that right and then in the session uh, sessions are basically uh, user information that lasts only for a certain period of time right uh, so session also can have caches and all of that is basically being fed through, but back to your app, depending on what the customer is trying to do, right? So, for example, if the customer is trying to get a list of, let's say, the last, I don't know, like last time, uh, last ten, let's say, uh, 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 transactions, correct? Uh, so, if the customer is trying to do that, then what happens is uh, you need to first of all hit the DB to get the list of all the ten transactions. Then also when you're generating, let's say the last 10 transaction, uh, I don't know, maybe let's say you're generating a PDF, right? Uh, uh, correct. So when you're generating a PDF, it will have some static content, correct? It will have like its image and it will have like a table where the transactions are fed, right? This is all going to be like, you know, part of the CDN and then a session information could be last login information uh, that's put on there, user information, name, age, blah, 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 all of that. I think, again, part of uh, uh, the session uh, that you return and generate a PDF and then maybe send it to uh, the user through an email, right? As opposed to, let's say, you're just 
using the app uh, to check the balance, the latest balance after you did a transaction. So in that, I don't need the CDN layer. I don't also probably need uh, the DB layer, uh, depending on like, uh, you know, if I have not done any transaction in the last 24 hours, I'll just use the session history. And in the session history, I'm just going to run a query on DB, get, I think, my aggregated total balance, return on the session, and that's it. Return back to the app. So uh, use cases wise, I think caches definitely simplify, uh, uh, you know, in finance through a multi-layer caching approach, a lot of uh, uh, cases. But what I would recommend is that when you're thinking of industries, right, try to think of uh, uh, business like business KPIs, uh, you know, that will be impacted uh, and the customer pain point that is being solved, right? So for example, in this last use case that we looked at, right, Cache's design are helping you to solve a multiple use cases wherein the customer could run the query multiple times, single time, X number of times, whatever the case may be, right? You have a cache in place for pretty much solving all the use case, correct? Uh, if you look at our e-commerce side, um, recommendations, personalization, all of these are use cases, right? Within that specific industry that are solving a particular pain point. Personalizations, what is personalization helping you, your user with? The user doesn't have to scan the entire catalog, right? Whatever the user has bought very frequently, you just show it up front to the user. Uh, it saves you the cost of scanning the entire database. It saves the customer the time and purchases are happening repeatedly, right? So uh, that would be all for today's uh, discussion. Uh, I think in the last part of caches, uh, which would be part three, I would be covering up uh, some of the industry used caches uh, like Redis and Memcache, and then uh, you know we'll close it uh, from there. The discussion on the caches. Uh, uh, please like, subscribe, and share uh, you know the content. Thank you very much.